So today we're going to have the chap ninth chapter. This is the estrocycle. So the estrocycle is this. It has four phases, which we'll be going to discuss a little bit later. And this um, diagram, we'll discuss it as we later on. So we're going to return on this one. So before we discuss our estrocycle, we also have to take note the age of puberty and their estimated body weight when they do hit it. So this is according to the animals. We also have according to species. So hormones and hormonal changes during the estrocycle. So when you say hormones, this involves the endocrine glands. So these glands are produ that produce hormones without a duct outlet. And the exocrine glands, because this, there's also another group of glands called the exocrines. These are glands that produce hormones via a duct outlet. So again, most of our glands involved are called endocrine. One of the glands involved in the estrocycle is the hypothalamus. This is located in the brain. This is where it is. So this is a part of the brain. It's actually here. And then we also have another um, endocrine gland called the pituitary gland, which is located just below the hypothalamus. I would suggest that you should also check on anatomy. If you have my notes, please do check. For those who don't have, you may ask um, some people if they can let you borrow their notes. It's e um, supposed to be, an, uh, if in the old curriculum, if anatomy is, we still have anatomy in, like the old curriculum, the nervous system and the endocrine system are coverage for period two. So what is the function of your hypothalamus? So it releases gonadotropin releasing hormone or the GNRH. It stimulates the secretion of the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. So uh, next one is the anterior pituitary gland. So this is right below the hypothalamus. And this one will release the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Later on, we will there's a diagram, there's a figure wherein you will see how these hormones influence the reproductive. For the, uh, the reproductive system of a female as well as how the, occur, uh, the events that occur during the estrus cycle. Then we have the ovaries. So this is usually located in the anterior of the uterine horn, ventral to the kidneys. So for those who are familiar with anatomy terms, this is anterior in front of the horn or in our language, we prefer it calling it cal cranial, cranial to the horn, and ventral to the kidneys. This is just right below the kidneys. Actually, we prefer calling it caudal to the kidneys. The function of the ovaries is it secretes steroids and estrogen. Aside from that is where the ovum or the oocyte is being released as well. The source of the oocyte or ovum. So these are the different glands or the, whole, the different endocrine glands. So we have the hypothalamus, then the pituitary. We'll discuss pineal gland later when we're going to discuss the seasonal breeders, which is part of this chapter. Then we have the ovaries. The adrenal cortex is another. We will discuss this later on when we, we have parturition, which is in another chapter. The adrenal cortex is just cranial to the kidneys. So the gonadotropin releasing hormone, its function is to stimulate the anterior pituitary glands to secrete the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. It's a function. While the follicle stimulating hormone is secreted by the basophilic cells of the anterior pituitary glands, and functions to stimulate the development of the follicles in the ovaries. 
between the FSH and the LH, the FSH will be released first. Later on, again, there's a diagram when we're going to discuss why. While the luteinizing hormone is also secreted by the basophilic cells of the anterior pituitary glands, and they stimulate the development of the corpus luteum in the ovaries. The corpus luteum is the remaining scar once the, ov the ovum or the oocyte is being released. The follicle where it, uh, where it left become a scar becomes a scar tissue and that's the corpus luteum. Estrogen. This is produced by the interstitial cells of the ovary and the theca cells of the follic growing follicle under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. This is from McDonald. This is one of the books that we use. Um, McDonald is the author of the books that we use for endocrinology and reproductive physiology, one of the subjects that you're going to take in your higher veterinary medicine. This hormone is influenced secondary female characteristics, such as the development of the other, and most prominent hormone during the estrus. This is responsible in inhibiting the growth of bones and favors ossification of the epiphyseal lines. That's the reason why female stops growing when they become when they hit puberty. During menopause, osteoporosis happens since the ovaries are no longer producing estrogen. Progesterone are sourced from the luteal cells from the corpus luteum. During the late pregnancy, it's late, the placenta may become the source of progesterone. The function of the progesterone is it acts on the uterus to cause the quietening of the myometrium, that's the muscles inside in the uterus, myo meaning muscle, metrium, that's the uterus and the secretion of uterine milk by endometrial glands. Endometrial glands are usually found in your horses. Progesterone also favors gestation. So this is the one that maintains pregnancy. So this is the figure or the graph that I was talking about. So this is, on, on this column or row, you have the hormones FSH and LH. And how, and you have the ovarian hormones, estrogen, represented by estradiol and progesterone. And then what happens in the ovaries? What happens to the follicles? Under the influence of these, these hormones, these hormones over here, and these hormones also. And the last column is how um, the influence of these hormones to the endometrial lining. So the FSH is usually, okay, as the FSH increases its um, production, the estrogen levels is gradually increasing as well. Take a look also of what happens in the ovaries. There's a recruitment of possible oocysts or and then there's a selection and then the follicle will become mature uh, will try to mature and then it becomes big so if you remember gametogenesis one of these will become the actual ovum which is this one this one here on the arrow and this one is a follicle and the arrest will become polar bodies. So if you notice, as the estrogen increases, the development of the follicle, and there you can see the development of the follicle. The follicle stimulating hormone increases as well and then dives, increases a bit as the estrogen levels have increased. And right before ovulation, the FSH level has increased its uh, production. But as the FSH also increases, the luteinizing hormone levels have also increased. 
because in the, this is in anticipation of ovulation, wherein there's a rupture of the follicle, releasing the ovum, which is this one, that I'm pointing on the arrow, in, or, in order it to go to the uterine body where it, can, it will be fertilized. The ruptured follicle will become the corpus luteum. So if you notice, utilizing hormone pack goes down and then back again. Take a look also at the progesterone. As the estrogen levels goes down, the progesterone levels gradually goes up. It become um, it increases its production upon the formation of the corpus luteum. If the ova or the ovum is fertilized by a sperm cell, the corpus luteum will remain. Thus, the progesterone levels will be will still be in this level during pregnancy. Estrogen will rest. How about the endometrial lining? If you notice during the earlier stages as the follicle develops, as the estrogen increases and the follicle stimulating hormone is um, produced, you can notice a gradual increase in the, thickening, in the thickness of the endometrial lining. This is an, in anticipation of pregnancy. If the animal becomes pregnant, the thickness will remain in order to protect the fetus. Now we go to the phases of the estrus cycle. They have four phases, estrus, metestrus, diestrus, and proestrus. So again, estrus is the period wherein the female is receptive to the male and will stand for mating. Metestrus, uh, this begins with the cessation of estrus, once estrus stops and lasts for about three days. And this is primarily the period of the corpus luteum. And this is where the cows, water buffaloes, and does will ovulate. So if you are an AI technician, you will also ask, the farmer, when was the last time your cow manifests estrus? Or that's one of the things that you also have to take note. So the, the farmer will say about three days ago. So meaning three days ago. So uh, we, at this time, we can do AI on that cow. So again, it is important that you already you, you know the different signs of estrus, and because estrus, why do you think you have to do uh, you have to know when again in order for you in order to have a successful AI? So in order for us to have a successful AI on this cow, you really have to know when was the last or when were the days that the animal exhibited estrus or in heat behavior in order for you to have a successful AI. And this is about the best time for you to inseminate the cow. Diestrus. Period in cycle when the corpus luteum is fully functional. There is an increase in blood concentration of progesterone and can be first detected and ends with the regression of the corpus luteum. If the animal becomes pregnant, the animal is in diestrus phase. So remember this, this diagram? So this, this is how the estrus cycle is explained. So we have the estrus phase, which happens to be the follicular phase. And the dominant um, hormone is the estrogen. So we have here, so the ovary with follicle, estrogen, and follicle from ruptured ovary is being released. Thus, you have ovulation. Right after ovulation, there's the pro progesterone is the dominant 
hormone. This time around, ovary with corpus luteum. This is what you call the luteal phase. If the animal becomes pregnant, the corpus luteum will regress by this hormone, prostaglandin. Prostaglandin F to alpha to be exact. This prostaglandin will lyse the corpus luteum in Bisaya ihilis. And right after the regression of the corpus luteum, the follicle-stimulating hormone is being released by the anterior, anterior pituitary glands to, to begin the cycle again. Hormones usually act on feedback mechanism. So if you, um, unfortunately, we don't have anatomy yet, so I'm going to preempt myself. Uh, the nervous system and the endocrine system always go hand in hand. So that's the reason why right after the nervous system, I included an adjunct chapter called the endocrine system because we're going to also introduce to you different endocrine glands aside, aside from those that I have mentioned in this video. So they, um, they, the feedback mechanism is wherein there is regression of the production of certain hormones, which is usually detected by the nervous system, and another hormone will, will begin to produce, will, will be produced if there is a decrease or increase in certain um, in certain hormones. That's what we call the feedback mechanism. Proestrus is another phase. So the principal distinguishing feature of proestrus is the occurrence of rapid follicle growth. This is from Bearden and Bouquet. And later during the period, the effect of estrogen on the duct system and behavioral symptoms of estrus is being exhibited by the animal. So it's not necessarily that the animal, once it exhibited signs of estrus, that's the time that we immediately inseminate the animal or have the animal mated. No. Sometimes you really have to count how many days because you really have to know the ovulation period. A successful AI, successful mating, would also make you um, a knowledge for this dates of ovulation will give you will will increase your success in mating or in insemination okay. so what is corpus luteum a temporary endocrine organ which functions only for a few days in the cycling of non-pregnant animals but functions throughout most of pregnancy in most domestic animals except for the mares because the mares have endometrial cups primarily releases progesterone and the structure of the follicle remaining on the surface of the ovary after ovulation, which contains layers of granulosa and fecal cells. This is from Guyton and Hall, our go-to book for physiology, regardless is if it's human or veterinary. The high concentration of luteinizing hormone before ovulation converts these cells to lutein cells, which enlarge after ovulation and become yellowish. Again, from Guyton and Hall. Instead, um, breeding patterns. There are two patterns of seasonal breeding. We have the monoestrus, in which they only have one period of heat in a season. Examples of these are your female dogs, the bitch. We also have polyestrus. These animals have a series of estrus cycles, but to a limited portion or period during the year, which includes your cows, ewes, mares, and does. The queen is your female cat. In the tropics, most of the domestic animals, like your cows, use and doe cycle throughout the year because there is no clear, especially for us because we live near the equator, there is no clear um, distinction if we have a, um, long days or longer days or longer nights. Um, the difference is just minutes. Unlike those who live in northern hemisphere, in north, in more temperate countries, high up, higher up than us, you can sense the difference between the length of the day 
depending on the season. So like even in Hong Kong, in July, which is around that's summer months, at 5 a.m., the sun is already like 6 a.m. here in the Philippines. And, or 7 a.m., sorry, 7 a.m. here in the Philippines. And at around 8, that's their sunset. In Alaska, where my cousins are, during the summer months from June up to August, their day length will be around almost 12 to 16 hours. And they can only enjoy sh um, shorter nights also. Sometimes they, um, if you go higher up, like, because they live right um, south of, a few miles south of the North Pole, or not, not North Pole, the Arctic Circle. For those who live be north of the Arctic Circle, you can already sense that you only have two hours of night during the summer and 22 hours of daylight. For caracals, also cycle throughout the year, but there is preponderance of offspring from August to January, which is our wet season. Ewes and does are animals that are characterized by short day or fall breeders. So their breeding season is initiated as the ratio of daylight to darkness decreases and ends when increasing day lengths reach a ratio of nearly equal daylight and darkness. Autumnal equinox to spring spring equinoxes from Beard and Folk Bay. By the way, this is for the Northern Hemisphere. So for Northern Hemisphere, their winter is December, January up to February. That's their winter. And the summer is, again, June, July, August. It's for the Northern Hemisphere. South of the equator, or the Southern Hemisphere, which includes Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, South Africa, and Chile, their season is the opposite. So when it's December, January, and February, that's their summer months. June, July, August, that's their winter months. For mares, mares are long day breeders. This is for me, Beard and Fouquet. Cycle is initiated as the ratio of daylight to darkness increases and ends during decreasing day lengths. The peak of their fertility are between May and July. Here in the Philippines, we prefer to breed them in January. So all of them will have a birthday of January 1 when they register. Photo period action. So this is the reason why I... This is where the pineal gland is so the re this is the reason why you have bre uh, seasonal breeders the retina of the eye is the photic sensor with these signals transmitted by way of the retino hypothalamic tract of the suprachiasmatic nuclei the urinal signals generated by the suprachiasmatic nuclei are transmitted to the superior cervical ganglia and then to the pineal gland by the sympathetic nerves during darkness, the sympathetic activity increases, resulting in greater activation of an enzyme needed for the synthesis of melatonin. So for those who have sleeping problems, those with insomnia, they're usually being treated with melatonin. The pineal gland, through the synthesis and release of melatonin, serve as a mediator between the neural signals induced by changing photoperiod and the endocrine system that regulates cyclic reproductive activity. And through either direct or indirect action on the hypothalamus, melatonin modulates seasonal breeding activity and short day and long day breeders. Again, ovulation. So ovulation is the event where in the graphian follicle, that's the mature follicle where the ovum is, ruptures releasing the ovum or ova in the case of our litter bearing animals, such as your dogs, cats, and pigs. Frequently asked questions regarding the estrocycle cycle and ovulation. When does the estrocycle cycle exactly start? On the day wherein the animal first exhibits signs or behavior as discussed in the previous video, discounted as day one of the cycle. Why do primates and humans menstruate? 
menstruation is sometimes termed as a tears of frustrated uterus. Normally, a human female has a 28-day menstrual cycle in which they are ovulating midway through the cycle, which is usually day 14. During this time, the uterine lining thickens in anticipation of fertilization of the ovum and conception of a cycle. If there will be no sexual contact during ovulation, the human female will menstruate. Our cousins, the chimpanzees, has a 35-day menstrual cycle. Why do dogs bleed or menstruate when they are in heat? This is due to vaginal bleeding usually begins as the diapodesis of erythrocytes, these are your red blood cells, through the endometrium and subepithelially as capillaries rupture within the endometrium. It's from Feldman and Nelson. It's one, also, one of our books also for reproductive physiology. And that's the meaning of the diapodesis over here. So that's it. So that's the estro cycle. So if you do have questions, please do ask. I really appreciate any, any more questions if you want. The next video, I'm going to have the um, gestation. Um, we'll do it, it's chapter 10, and we'll divide it into three videos, gestation, abortion, and parturition. Until then, you guys, take care, and I'll see you later.